Excuse me. Hello. So finally, part two of the MPC-60 restoration. It's taken me a few weeks longer to edit this than I was expecting, but I think we'll just kick straight into it. So last time we left off doing a bit of retro brighting. Let's pick up straight back from there. So retro brighting always seems to work best when you've got a lot of sunlight, a lot of heat, and of course, a lot of hydrogen peroxide. So I'll keep checking on this throughout the day, but while that's cooking, I'll get on to the rest of the project. So I've decided to remove every single button on the MPC and replace with new ones. I think it's a false economy to try and just do the ones that are broken and try and stick with the old ones, because of course the old ones are old, they're going to go bad. So best to get the old ones off, replace with new ones, and hopefully we should be good for another 30 years. So every few hours I'll come back and massage the retro brighting, and after a few hours it looks like this. While still slightly yellow, it's a million times better than what it was previously. I'm really happy with the results. So a few years ago, I used to be able to just walk into a local hardware store. They'd have paints in pretty much every color that you'd think of. And I could normally find a pretty good match for almost anything that I was restoring. That's not the case at the moment. Um, I think we're seeing globally the supply chain problems with pretty much everything. So I was thinking about this for quite a while and I think I came up with a good solution. So I bought a few tubes of acrylic paint of various colours to sort of get me to that Akai beige with a bit of mixing. Now if you thin the paint down quite significantly, you'll see that you can slowly build up the paint and actually come to a decent level. Now it's never going to look fantastic, it's never going to look like it wasn't damaged, but it definitely will look a lot better than it did. So as I said earlier, I normally buy spray paints and I can blend it in. And even if the color's slightly out, you can normally get a really good blend and it sort of tricks the eye. So here I'll have to blend by fingers to sort of push the paint around a little, as you can see. <sighs> These end cheeks, um, yeah, they've, uh, Unfortunately, seen better days. They're sort of warped and um, yeah, no amount of retro writing is going to bring these back to life. So I'm going to have to do a different solution. So I had quite a few different options here. There was some really nice wooden panels, wooden egg cheeks that you can buy online from a guy. Oh, I'm going to say Croatia, but I'm probably completely wrong. And they're really high quality, super nice. Now, obviously I'm doing this on a budget, like I said, so I decided just to make my own. So putting the buttons back on, and I am once again super happy with the quality of this. It's come up really, really nice. And all the new switches underneath give a really nice tactile feel when you're pressing. So well worth the effort. So the piece of wood at the back here is just to try and save me overstressing the hinges on the actual front panel. And of course, make sure you hold your tongue at the right angle while screwing things back together. Time to check alignment before I finish screwing everything back together. And yeah, looks really great. So final screws going in and we should be good to go with the next part. A quick look at how it's coming together and I think it's starting to look so much better than it did. So the next part is to actually get the bolster back on on the front and then we'll take a look at the backlight in the screen. So the backlight's just a normal electroluminescent panel. The inverter that is required to run that backlight is still in good functional condition and I'm just going to replace the backlight for the moment. You can buy reproduction LCD screens 
and they look really great. They're modern, so they have a lot higher contrast and a lot brighter screens. But we're doing this on a budget, and right at the moment, there's no reason not to use the EL panel, so I'll just replace it with a new one. So this is really the final time I'm going to be hooking things into here for the moment before obviously I turn it on and test it. And as such, and as I've had the whole thing apart, I'm going to take a serious amount of time just to check I've got everything connected correctly, I haven't put anything in backwards and it should be good to go and not cause any damage. Replacing the screen is nice and easy. Akko has made it super easy to get to the screws on each end. So screwing in the new end cheeks, I think they came up great for literally a backyard job. Last thing to do is install the new SCSI card. So this will allow me to use a SCSI to SD adapter. So I can use SD cards now to store my samples. Unfortunately, the MPC60 doesn't have a preview. So you have to be really careful with your naming conventions when you name the samples. Otherwise, you'll never really know what you're loading into memory. Last thing to do is just check the SCSI to SD card, make sure that's all hooked correctly, and we should be done. So, this is where we came in. This was the state of the MPC when I got it straight out of the box. So while not a perfect restoration, it looks so much better than it did, and now it's something that I'm proud to have sitting in my studio. So there we go. While not perfect, it's a lot better than it was. It looks so much better than it did before. When I sit in front of it and use it, it doesn't freak me out or make me urgently want to wash my hands. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for checking this out. Oh, so for the eagle-eyed viewer, there's three things in this restoration. Still looking down at the NPC. There's three things in this restoration that I haven't filmed. Now, if you know what they are, feel free to leave me a comment below and show me you were paying attention. And one of them might be really interesting to people. So if you want me to do a separate video on that, I'll do a really short clip of how I actually did that part of the restoration. Thanks for watching. I'm going to take a little break for a few weeks after this. So I don't know if I'll be releasing any clips over that time. I might just do a music track or I might do a live stream. But other than that, I'll see you all in about a month. Thanks for watching.